Hello, sixth graders. Welcome to sixth grade math greatest common factor lesson. Pause while you write the lesson title in your interactive student notebook. Pause again while you write today's lesson objective in your interactive student notebook. I can identify the greatest common factor of two whole numbers less than or equal to 100 using various strategies by completing practice problems with 100% accuracy in multiple attempts. The Arizona State Standard that we will be addressing today is interpret a context to construct an equivalent expression using the greatest common factor, least common multiple, and the distributive property. Let's take a look at example one. Finding the greatest common factor using lists of factors. It says list the factors of each number. Factors of 24, and it lists them out for you, and factors of 40. I am going to tell you when you list factors, you probably need to use a factor rainbow like we did in the last lesson. So you need to start with one and multiply that by 24 and 2 goes into 24 evenly, 2 times 12 is 24, and 3 goes into 24 evenly, 3 times 8 is 24, 4 times 6 is 24. If you are just trying to think of the factors of a number, you are probably going to forget some, and that's how we get into trouble. Um, so be sure you use some sort of a tool like a factor rainbow in order to be sure you get all of the factors. Then the next thing you do after you've got all of the factors for both of the numbers that you're looking at, 24 and 40, is you look to see what your common factors are. So remember that common factors are the factors that are in both of your factor lists. So the common factors of 24 and 40 are 1, 2, 4, and 8, because 1 is in both lists, 2 is in both lists, 4 is in both lists, and 8 is in both lists. The greatest of these common factors is 8. So the greatest common factor of 24 and 40 is 8. Another way to find the greatest common factor of two or more numbers is by using prime factors. And... That's a really important thing to know how to do, and so we'll go over that. The greatest common factor is the product of the common prime factors of the numbers. So stay tuned, and we will get to how to do that. Example two is finding the greatest common factor, GCF, using prime factorizations. So let's look at this study tip. Examples 1 and 2 show two different methods for finding the greatest common factor. Uh, after solving with one method, you can use the other method to check your answer. So we're going to find the greatest common factor of 12 and 56. You make a factor tree for each number. So 2 times 6 equals 12 and 2 times 3 equals 6. So we'll circle our prime factors. 56 is 7 times 8. 7 is circled, 2 is circled, and 2 and 2 are circled. And we write the prime factorization of each number. So we write it out as a multiplication problem. So 12 equals 2 times 2 times 3. And 56 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. And then we circle the common prime factors. So we have a 2 in both the list of factors, of prime factors for 12 and 56. So we circle that. And we have another 2. So we circle that. And the 3 does not match up with anything in the list of prime factors for 56. And the last two and the last seven in the list of prime factors for 56 don't match up with anything in 12. So we only have two twos that match up. So we 
You have a group of twos and another group of twos. So we multiply those together. One group of twos, the other group of twos. Two times two equals four. So we find the product of the common prime factors. So the GCF of 12 and 56 is four. So the value of doing greatest common factor with prime factorizations instead of factor rainbows or lists of factors is that when you get to larger numbers, it is difficult to list all of the factors. You miss some. So sometimes your greatest common factor gets missed. So it's easier to do it with prime factorization. There's another reason also, but I'll tell you that secret in another lesson. Now we're going to look at finding two numbers with a given greatest common factor. So this is where the book or the problem gives you a greatest common factor and you find the two numbers. So which pair of numbers has a greatest common factor of 15? So we look at our choices, 10 and 15, 30 and 60, 21 and 45, or 45 and 75. So it says the number 15 cannot be a factor of the lesser number 10. So 15 doesn't go into 10. So it's not A. The number 15 cannot be a factor of a number that does not have a 0 or 5 in the 1's place. So 21 has a 1 in the 1's place. So C doesn't work. And then it says list the factors for statements B and D and then identify the greatest common factor for each. So factors of 30 are 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, and 30. Factors of 60 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 12, 15, and 30. And when we circle the common factors, the common factors are in blue. The greatest common factor is in red. So the greatest common factor for 30 and 60 is 30. That's not what we're looking for. So choice D, 45 and 75, our common factors are 1, 3, 5. And our greatest common factor is 15. So the greatest common factor of 45 and 75 is 15. So our correct answer is D. Example four is the real life application. You're filling pinatas for your sister's birthday party. The list shows the gifts you are putting into the pinatas. You want identical groups of gifts in each pinata with no gifts left over. What is the greatest number of pinatas you can make? You need to key on key into these terms so when you're given a problem and it asks you something like the greatest number of pinatas you need to think mm, I might be looking for the greatest common factor so the GCF of the numbers of gifts represents the greatest number of identical groups of gifts you can make with no gifts left over so to find the number of pinatas find the greatest common factor so you pri you do a factor tree for 18, you come up with the prime factorization of 2 times 3 times 3. And same thing for 24, 2 times 3 times 2 times 2. And 42 is 2 times 3 times 7. And then we circle the common prime factors. 2 times 2 times, I'm sorry, 2 and 2 and 2. So there's a 2 in all of them, and there's a 3 in all of them. None of the rest of the numbers are in all three prime factorizations. So we multiply two times three and we get six. So the greatest common factor of our three numbers is six. So we can make at most six pinatas. Remember, you need to be sure your notes in your ISN are complete and you need to do your questions in your Google form. Look at this lesson again and review it if you need to. Complete your Big Ideas math assignment in your math spiral notebook and submit that assignment when it is 100% correct and not before. Track your progress on your playlist.